Chinese boats chased by local fishermen in Iran. In Djibouti. On les a pris en flagrant délit. In Senegal. Examples of overfishing, often illegal, sent in by our observers from around the world. Industrial techniques that are a disaster for local fishermen and the environment. In the last 50 years, the Earth has lost more than half of its marine life, much of it to industrial fishing fleets operated by countries like Japan, South Korea, Spain and France. But above all, China, the world's biggest consumer and exporter of seafood and home to the world's biggest fishing fleet. Its boats often operating on the edge of what's legal far out at sea. Local communities try to fight back using their phones to document abuses hoping to protect their environment and their livelihood. Publicly available tracking data is another resource. Squid jiggers unloading onto a reefer, a refrigerated transport vessel. The boat's part of a huge Chinese fishing fleet were just off the protected waters of the Galapagos Islands. Known for their hammerhead sharks, giant tortoises, sea lions, and penguins. The fleet stayed south of the Galapagos territorial waters, 350 kilometers from the islands, invisible from shore. But its presence was felt. This year in particular, we have been finding lots of Chinese bottles, plastics, water bottles, a lot of water bottles. They were all over the islands in uh, most of the places the currents brought them in. And you could see them on the rocks, you could see them on the beaches, and they were piling up and collecting. It was uh, really sad. The island's fishermen noticed a difference too. Like Donato Rendon, Ivone's husband, who has been fishing off the Galapagos for more than 30 years. La flota china es ya barcos ya demasiado sofisticados, que ya son ya de 1000, 2000 toneladas, son barcos factoría y se llevan todas las especies que tenemos aquí en este santuario marino de la reserva marina de Galápagos. Ahorita sí se ve una escasez ya de 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 peces dentro de la reserva. Porque ya ahora, por ejemplo, uno sale por dos o tres días y se queda hasta cinco o seis días para poder obtener cuatro o cinco quintales. Ships contribute to pollution, bad news for the island's marine life. Many of the species are unique to the Galapagos, the main attraction for tourism, which provides a living for half the island's residents, including Ivone. The fish are eating the plastic, they're eating their nylons, and uh, they end up with that in their stomachs, and we are actually eating that. We have lower and lower numbers of fish, and that will also affect lower and lower number of uh, birds, especially seabirds, which are one of our main attractions in the Galapagos Islands. We'll also have a lower number of sharks, and that will also affect our tourist attraction. I see less animals on the islands, it's worrying. We wanted to know more about the Chinese fleet, so we went to a site called Global Fishing Watch. Global Fishing Watch is a site that lets you track industrial fishing vessels around the world. International shipping rules say that all vessels with gross tonnage of 300 or more, the size of a trawler like this one, must transmit a tracking signal at all times. That's what we're seeing here. This, for example, an Ecuadorian tuna boat between May and July. We decided to see what Chinese boats were up to. Each color is a different fishing vessel. 
you can see how they move up the coast of the Ecuadorian mainland, then go west, skirting the territorial waters south of the Galapagos. But they never cross the line. They get close, sometimes just two kilometers, but you never see them cross, at least not on this site. We were able to track 170 vessels, but the team at Global Fishing Watch's headquarters counted even more. At times, there's been up to 350 vessels, including the uh, bunker vessels and the transshipment vessels. There's a mixture of vessels in there. They're mainly with what we call squid jiggers. The squid fleet uses bright lights to attract the squid to the surface to catch them. But there's also some vessels in there that support that fleet to allow them to either refuel or transfer the fish at sea in order that fish can go to port while the vessels continue to fish. We used the site to track this refrigeration ship, here seen taking on loads from two squid jiggers. You can read its name, the Yongxiang 9. The 9,000 ton vessel flies a Panamanian flag, but it's operated by a company based in Hong Kong. During its stay in the area, the ship met up with at least 15 fishing vessels. It's impossible to know how many in all because its tracking signal was turned off on July 16th, five days before it was filmed, illegal for a vessel that large. The Yongxiang 9 reappeared four weeks later when it docked at the Chinese port of Weihai, 16,000 kilometers away. Weihai is an industrial port complex and the biggest center for squid processing in China. 200,000 tons of squid, washed, sliced, and frozen each year. Destined for customers in China and elsewhere in Asia, but also Europe and the United States. That just because a vessel is, is in Global Fishing Watch, it does not indicate that it's fishing illegally and it's an unregulated fishery in, in, in the most part. Um, there could be illegal activity occurring in there. Part of the difficulty is, is understanding who's authorized, who's not authorized, who's there, who's not there. Uh, what are they actually catching? Is there shark bycatch? This summer was not the first time Chinese fleets have come to the waters off the Galapagos to fish. In 2017, this ship was seized inside the reserve by the Ecuadorian army. It had 300 tons of fish on board, including 6,000 sharks. Its crew were given prison sentences for illegally holding and transporting protected species. And when you've got somewhere as sensitive as Galapagos, so close to where that fishery is occurring, we, we have to be sure that the, the extraction of the fish is not damaging what that reserve was set up to protect. Somewhere, someone has to take responsibility for that fleet and make sure it's not drawing on resources inappropriately. The fleet off the Galapagos was just one example. Our observers in Iran, Djibouti and West Africa have been telling us for years about overfishing in their regions and questionable practices by Chinese boats. From Mauritania down the West African coast to the Gulf of Guinea, an estimated 40% of the fish that are caught are caught illegally. That has a direct impact on 7 million locals who depend on fishing for their living. This video was filmed by fishermen from the Ivory Coast working on a Chinese trawler. They said this bottlenose dolphin, despite its protected status, was stored and transported on the boat, which is illegal. The Ivorian fishermen sent other videos to the observers, saying they are evidence of overfishing in the region. Par mon mécontentement, j'ai filmé ça pour montrer ça à la communauté internationale. Voici ce qui se passe dans les îles ivoiriennes. C'est les alevins qu'on pêche ici. Voilà le poisson qu'on devait des tonnes de poissons. Captain Jean de Dieu Dacoury is the fisherman's spokesman. Le ralement des des pêcheurs, c'est la surpêche des bateaux chinois. C'est que le repos biologique n'est pas respecté. C'est la période où cesse la pêcherie que toute espèce puisse mieux se reproduire. Donc ça met à mal un peu l'équilibre de l'écosystème marin. 
Quand on voit les bateaux chinois venir pêcher et prendre toute la pêche qu'ils ont faite dans l'espace territorial ivoirien et envoyer ça directement en Chine, bon là, il y a un problème. Alors que nous aussi, on peine à, à arrêter le marché local. Quand on dit bateaux chinois, c'est des bateaux qui partent par l'Union ivoirien, mais qui ont des équipages chinois. Ça, c'est un avis chinois. Nous voyons là un des chefs des embarquements. Nous les bateaux déjà, ce sont des bateaux chinois. Comme Aïdoufi, Ronchan, euh, Yong Yu, le capitaine de pêche, c'est un chinois. Le maître de pêche est un chinois. Le mécanicien est un chinois. Et c'est les autres membres d'équipage, les matelots qui sont que les Africains. C'est contraire au code maritime ivoirien. The code says 30% of the crew is supposed to be Ivorian, including the officers. Jean de Dieu says none of the Chinese boats currently in the port of Abidjan complies. La nuit encore va travailler plus que les esclaves. Il y a une mafia qui ne dit pas son nom, qui traîne depuis des années et qui met à mal d'abord la vie même des marins pêcheurs. Of 80 fishing boats based at the port of Abidjan, 55 are operated by joint ventures, companies registered in the Ivory Coast but with Chinese managers. The boats get licenses to fish in Ivorian waters and fly the Ivorian flag. We tried to track them online, but almost all of the Chinese boats disactivated their tracking signals. Like this one, the Hailu Fang 11, owned by a joint venture called Haina Fishery. Boats of this size are required to keep their signal on at all times. Authorities in Nigeria slapped the company with a 6,600 euro fine in May because of the Hai Lu Feng's disactivated signal. This lack of transparency is often associated with overfishing, which is rife in the region. In Senegal and Mauritania, 50% of species are overfished, one of the highest levels in the world. Fishermen in the region say their governments don't stand up to foreign-owned fishing interests. The last formal statement by African leaders was in 2015, when 24 African countries called on China to end illegal fishing by its fleets. On sait que beaucoup de ces bateaux chinois ont été épinglés au niveau de la sous-région dans des actes de pêche CNN, illégales, non matériellement déclarés. Parce qu'il y a des maillages qui ont été réduits, il y a des captures d'espèces qui ne sont pas dans les licences, il y a des captures d'espèces qui sont interdites, il y a des pêches dans les zones qui sont interdites. Donc ce qui se passe à Côte d'Ivoire, c'est ce qui s'était passé au Ghana et au Libéria. Aujourd'hui, c'est ce qui a commencé à se passer au Sénégal. Cette ressource a été complètement décimée par tous ces gros bateaux qui sont là. Une bonne partie de la pêche aujourd'hui est transformée en farine de poisson. Aller nourrir des, 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 des animaux en Europe ou bien en Asie, ou bien même nourrir des poissons d'élevage, on tue le poisson africain pour nourrir, nourrir le poisson européen ou bien le poisson asiatique. Ça, c'est extrêmement grave. Il ne faut pas oublier que dans nos pays de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, beaucoup de nos populations ont accès à la protéine animale à partir des poissons qui sont transformés, qui sont séchés ou bien qui sont fumés. C'est la sécurité alimentaire de ces populations-là qui est menacée. Les conséquences, c'est ce qui se passe aujourd'hui avec l'immigration clandestine. Parce que quand le pêcheur est découragé, qu'il sent qu'il ne peut plus vivre de son produit, mais qu'est-ce qu'il pense faire Il se dit, mais moi, il faut que je quitte ce métier, je n'ai pas un autre métier, alors je sors de mon pays. In recent weeks, thousands of people from Senegal and Mauritania have made the dangerous crossing to Spain's Canary Islands. Among them, many fishermen.